In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to choose between the two different color pickers that you have. One works great in a certain environment, the other in a different one. For a while, I thought they were both the same, but let me show you the difference between the two. What we have on track number one is a video of the Golden Gate Bridge. And when we play it, we see the cars on the bridge and the ships in the water. Let's assume I want to put a title, and I want the title to be a certain kind of color for the font face. We're going to show you how to do that. But also, if you look very carefully, now the timeline is moving into a still object that I put on the end of the timeline. I did that for a reason, because I want to illustrate what you can do and what the differences are between the two different color pickers. So let's move down to track number two where I have my title. I'm going to actually enlarge it here a bit. And let's say we want to change the word bridge to a different color. If I double click on it, that will get me into my title designer. And I have on the left side of the screen the opportunity to change the look of the font by color. I have a block I can pick from and then I have the eyedropper, which is your classic color picker icon. So if I click on the eyedropper to the right of the box, what I'm going to see is a screen pop up. If you look very carefully at the screen, you're going to see at the top it says select color from timeline. Now if you want a color that is found particularly inside that video itself and no other color, this is a great place to go because all you do is move to the frame where you want that particular color and you pick it either say here from the water, we could pick a color from the bridge, anything we like. So if I click on it, that will click this color and I can click OK. And now I've changed it. But I'm limited to colors only somewhere on the timeline. Now the thing to remember is it doesn't simply have to be this video because I'm going to click on it again. We're going to change it a second time. And now I'm moving somewhere else in the video near the end and now I have my still image. And I can pick any color I like from this image because it's on the timeline someplace. And choose this orange and click on that and now I've changed it to that particular color. I'm going to cancel out of that and not save my changes because I want to show you the other kind of color picker you have. The one we've just used, the color selections you have have to be on the timeline somewhere. But what if it's not already on the timeline? What can you do? I'm going to move my power director over a little bit to give me some more room. Now I'm going to pretend that this panel on the right is also part of my desktop. Now I'm going to open up an image and this will be the image on part of my desktop. So if I want to go back to PowerDirector and use something that I've placed somewhere on my desktop for color, I do it slightly differently. I click back on my title. In this case, since we're using a title color, you can change other, th other colors as well, but we're just working with title. And instead of clicking on the eyedropper, I click on the box. Normally we use that to pick a color from the color picker or from the range over here, but we also have a box below that says select from screen. Now how this color picker is different, though the icon is the same, is this allows you to pick any color from anything that you've been able to place on your desktop. So what I'm going to do is click on that button and now you notice it changes. I can actually pick a color from any of the tools in PowerDirector, but I also can pick a color from outside of the color director window, any color I like on the screen. And if I take this uh, purple here, purplish blue, click on that, and now I've changed the color. So that gives you a lot more variety. You're not confined to only the colors perhaps in the video or anything else on the timeline using this method. Now click on OK. And we'll move this back and we'll make sure this covers the whole screen here. So those are the two options. Similar icons, but very different result when you're modifying the color to be very specific to a certain color that you want in CyberLink PowerDirector.